All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of This Week in Charts via Carnivore Trades and Wall Street from Main Street. If you've not done so already, give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, come find Jason on Patreon, or come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, so markets bidding up this week, most of the work done. You can see there on Wednesday, coming after Jerome Powell's comments in his press conference, where he basically took a slightly more dovish tone. And essentially, he telegraphed that we're going to do a 50 basis point hike in December. It does look like to me that after that one, um, that will probably be the last. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more later here. But um, overall, for right now, uh, a Fed pivot, which this is not necessarily a pivot, it's just a slowdown, um, but I believe the Fed pivot itself is probably a sell the news event. And whether that's this uh, coming FOMC on the 13th or 14th, I believe it is, it's two weeks away, um, or whether that's in quarter one next year when we have uh, the next meeting, which isn't all the way till February. And the reason why the pivot is a sell the news event is because the economy has to be really bad for Jerome Powell to make that pivot, especially with inflation as high as it is currently. And remember, rate hikes take a long time to filter through the system. Uh, it's not, you know, people think it's just a magical switch, you just flip on and off, but it takes a long time. We've barely feeling the effects of the first and second uh, 75 basis point hike earlier this year. So there is a bit of a lagging effect. And if you don't believe that the market can continue to go lower, just look back at 2001. Um, the Fed hiked right at the beginning of the year and the market lost about 44%. Uh, in 2007, Ben Bernanke cut rates and um, that was in the middle of 2007, right when the market was peaking. So there wasn't even any declines yet at that point. So um, I believe that we're looking at a sell the news event here. Um, and again, whether that's in December uh, in the next two weeks, uh, off the 50 basis point hike, or if that's in quarter one, that's really kind of the, the thesis I have moving forward here. Um, whether it's in December will be more dependent on how we trade up into it, right? If we're kind of sloppy and we pull back into it, um, there's a chance the market can kind of continue higher. But if we get overbought into it and the market gets too excited about the basis point hike, we start getting up into this resistance zone, uh, this upper trend line, that 420 area. If we're up into that and kind of on a euphoric like sugar buzz, then I think there's a higher likelihood, much higher likelihood of a bigger sell-off or correction uh, in the equity markets. So anyways, let's just talk about the levels here. That's kind of my thesis here as far as like the, the macro approach here. But again, we're, we're into this trend line. So we've been looking at this one for quite a while now. Um, this trend line is minor. And I'm just going to look at the ES futures here because I like the pattern a little bit better. You also have a little bit of a rising wedge here, which you'd also pay attention to. But you can see we had a nice up move, a nice consolidation there. Um, just a nice bullish inside bar, nothing wrong with that. And when you consolidate enough beneath a level, you can make it minor. So right now, um, we pushed up into it on Wednesday, obviously. Thursday, Friday, we did back off, but we didn't see a massive rejection, right? We didn't close at the lows on Friday. Uh, market actually rebounded and the spiders uh, just closed down 47 cents. So, I mean, basically flat. Um, so it's not like this was a major rejection here. The market does look like it's just stalling. Um, I do think we need to go up and at least fill this gap, maybe get a little bit through that. I have a level just a little bit above uh, this pivot, right around 414, 415. So I think that will probably get hit um, maybe even next week. Uh, maybe it'll get hit after the FOMC, but I do think we need to go up there and touch that level. So this trend line, it is a good trend line, but it's still, to me, it's minor at this point just because we've done this consolidation here. Um, so those are kind of the levels I'm looking at on the on the upside, and again, this uh, upsloping trend line here would be kind of your max upside in the short term. I think that would be, um, the market would get really extended at that point, and it would be a pretty good risk reward there for a sell opportunity. But um, as far as the downside, if you close any day below this uh, low here, so 393.48, or really 390 is the bigger level, but this, you know, negating this breakout bar, I think that does open the door for a, like, a waterfall sell, we had floodgates kind of open up type scenario. I'm not saying that happens, uh, but if that does, I do think that, um, you know, that will be the result there because um, that would essentially negate the reaction the market had to, you know, Jerome Powell's uh, press conference. And then over the triple Qs, just to kind of give you an idea there, I'm watching this little channel here, the yellow lines there. And again, that green bar low, close below that would be a huge red flag for me. And there's a massive air pocket here. 
um, between you know 263 and really 280. So there's a big gap, big volume gap there as well. And then a break of that trend line would probably take you right down to that gap as well. So there's that. Um, but then on the upside, of course, really, you know, I've been telling you guys 300, maybe 303. I've been saying that for probably a month or so now. And um, that does coincide with the 200 period moving average as well as this big trend line. Going back to April, it's also a whole round number. So it does make sense that a market probably wants to go up and test that. Whenever you get this close to those kind of um, big psychological levels, sometimes it acts like a magnet and uh, the market just needs to go up there and test it. And again, that would be also basically a 200 moving average hit as well. And that would likely coincide with, you know, one of the levels I just gave you there, that 414, 415 area, possibly this upsloping trend line. So charts are lining up pretty nicely, but those are the levels I'm watching here. As far as the sectors, let's start with the semis as we always do. Um, so SMH actually having a decent pattern here. Um, so a nice bid up and just kind of consolidating beneath the 200 moving average. It had a nice bid, obviously, on Wednesday. The concern right now, and I pointed this out in the Monday video, we didn't remember we did the video late um, last week as I was uh, sick over the weekend. Um, but again, the same kind of thing here. You, you know, the pattern wise, it's not terrible. Up move, sideways consolidation, that's usually a good sign. The only problem I have here is that you have basically equal highs on the semis versus the spiders which has, you know, here's your high, and then you have a higher high there. And the triple Qs, you have a high and a little bit more of a higher high. So the semiconductors are lagging. You guys know I hate when that happens. Um, it's generally a caution flag for me. So I wanna see the semis leading, um, and that is a problem here. It doesn't mean, them, you know, they can't move higher. It doesn't mean we can't get a bit up, but it is something to, uh, to watch here moving forward, that divergence will come into play if it plays out for too long. Uh, cloud software here via the IGV, same thing. So, you know, high and then a slightly lower high. So it is underperforming. Again, if the market holds up, this will hold up as well. I still think this wants to go test about 283, um, 282 to 283, but for right now it's safe. And again, if the market holds up, this will hold up. For the transports, same thing here. So if you guys know Dow Theory, um, DJT here, you have a high on a lower high on the DJT. And then if we just look at the uh, DJI Dow Industrials, you have a high and a higher high. So that is a bearish divergence from the transports. Transports are telling us that, uh, you know, the rally is a little bit suspect here. Now, again, it doesn't mean that um, we're going to sell off and dump tomorrow. It just means it's something to watch for. It's a caution flag. I do think the transports probably still can get up to 15,000. Been telling you that for really a couple of weeks now, maybe 15, one, you know, maybe up, you know, kind of closer to these pivots here, you know, wouldn't rule out a little bit of overshoot. Um, for right now, again, the pattern's not terrible, but just make note that we've got a little bit of divergence there from the semis and the transport. So if that continues, um, that is a red flag moving forward. Anyways, interest rates. So 10 year backing off, continuing to back off a little bit here uh, on the week, obviously you'd, you'd expect with the more dovish comments from the Fed. Um, we're still above that 100 moving average. There's a fair amount of support here around 3.4 here for the 10 year. Um, for the 30 year as well, it's pretty much into support right now. Wouldn't rule out a little bit more of a dip here. I do think, I'm just gonna go off a of TLT here. There is a really good amount of resistance that we're into right now. I do think it's probably due to pull back over the next week or so, and then we'll kind of see how it behaves uh, moving forward. But right now the 30 year is rallying off the lows. And again, that just adds to, uh, you know, the, the thesis that we're, we're headed for a pretty nasty recession here. And if we look at the two year, um, that has moved off the lows here. And remember, once the two year starts to bid up and the yield curves start to correct, that's the bond market's way of front running the Fed. So if we start to see the two years start to um, fix the yield curve, and I'll just flip over here. So this is the 210 spread. It's still inverted by almost 79 basis points. Three month tenure is inverted by over 82 basis points at this point. So these are still basically in free fall here. But once these start to reverse, um, you know, that's the market's way of telling us that the Fed is, you know, the market's going to front run the Fed. It's always going to be ahead of the Fed and the market will tell the Fed what to do. Um, but that is our signal here that um, that pivot is probably coming, coming and that has not quite happened yet. Um, but the 30 year is getting a nice bid um, for right now, although I do think it is into some short term resistance. Um, own builders here, XHB, ITB still have nice patterns here. ITB with the higher high. I still think this can get up to that 65 handle. Um, after that, I do not think it has much more upside. Um, I do think this is a sector that will not do well 
next year. But for right now, they're holding up. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now. VNQ via real estate here still has a decent pattern again. So that inside bar we've been following, there's the green bar and you're just kind of chopping inside of that and made a slight higher high there on Thursday. And, you know, still holding up okay. This still should get up to 94 based off that little inverse head and shoulders. So no problems with this right now. If you do close below uh, this level here, which is 83.95, um, this thing is probably done. So just be aware of that. But for right now, it's holding up okay. Um, XLF here, so financials, again, they're holding up okay. I do think it probably wants to go up and test that 37 area, maybe 37.50. No real problems right now. Speaking of financials, though, I want to look at Credit Suisse here. There was a liquidity swap done um, on Thursday, and it likely went to these guys. And as you can see, the share price just rallied almost 10% for seemingly no reason overnight. Um, that is, I've talked to some of my contacts, and I, there is kind of a suspicion that you know, Powell's tone in the press conference wasn't, he didn't really, he still said that uh, they were going to be aggressively raising rates, but he just changed his tone just a little bit. And I think, you know, based on some of the people I've talked to, there's kind of a theory that they were concerned about Credit Suisse again. Um, remember, a few months ago, they got that liquidity swap and the share price rallied. It held up for a month or two, and then boom, bottom has fallen out of it again recently. What happens the next day, literally the next day after the press conference uh, that Powell had Thursday, oh, some liquidity swap comes in, uh, currency swap comes into Credit Suisse. Um, so that's not a coincidence, if you ask me. Also, BlockFi went bankrupt uh, earlier this week. So, and, and we'll talk about crypto a little bit later. Um, but again, I think you you're kind of seeing uh, the powers that be realize, okay, like we got to be careful here because we don't want to cause a, a huge problem. Uh, we don't want to cause contagion. By the way, speaking of contagion, um, did you guys hear that Black, not Black Rock, Black Stone suspended withdrawals on one of their real estate investment trusts? So, you know, these crypto guys are, are you know, they're in stocks too and vice versa. And I think that's is in stocks and real estate and everything else. So this is all is all related. It's all um, connected. And I think uh, there's definitely a case to be made that the Fed uh, kind of knew that was going to happen, or you know knew what they were doing, and Powell knew what he was saying on Wednesday. Anyways, um, XLF still, as far as the charts are concerned, still holding up okay. Broker dealers are um, holding up all right here. This is still just um, defied gravity. This is a sector that will have a ton of risk. Their margins are going to get crushed next year once those rate hikes really start hitting those balance sheets. But for right now, um, they're holding up okay. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Into energy crude, um, getting down to the trend line earlier this week. Again, um, it is a nice trend line here. The only issue right now that I have with crude in kind of the medium term, is that the, the market really loves, um, especially Wall Street, they love their kind of demand destruction narrative. And, you know, if you start to see the Fed pivoting because uh, things are slowing down and, you know, we see bonds continue to rally, it could put pressure, it could make uh, investors a little nervous about crude moving forward, especially if we're going to have a global recession um, that will affect demand. Now, supply is still going to be tight. So there's higher floors in and long term energy is going to do very well, if you ask me. But in the medium term, there is a good chance that this you know energy could come under pressure here. So just be aware of that. Um, but for right now, it's holding the levels right now. It got a nice little bit off the 75 handle. I just really would have liked a stronger close on Friday, you know, close near the highs there. Um, but for right now, it's holding up. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. XLE. Um, also still high on the charts. I do think a lot of funds are in um, specifically like Exxon right now. They're trying to hold this into end of the year because they've gotten absolutely roasted on, you know, <laughs> NVIDIA, um, you know, Roku, Carvana, all these names that these guys were, were you know, uh, Roblox, these names that these guys were FOMOing into last year. Um, and they're holding Exxon because that's the only thing that's working. They want to be able to put that on their end of year statement um, so they can say that they actually had a winning trade this year. Um, so I do think they may want to keep it held up into, into the year end. That's a possibility. But again, I still think these energy names are still a little lofty due for a little bit of a correction here. I think OIH, again, still I'm looking for 260 here at some point. Again, long term, they are very um, attractive. But for right now, I'm still kind of just um, a little bit more on the neutral side with those. By the way, speaking of um, plays, so 
things that have fallen a lot. There will be, we'll talk about this more later in the year, um, but there will be a massive January effect, if you ask me, at least for a good swing trade. Um, you know, the stocks like Net, uh, Meta and Netflix, these will probably see some more tax loss selling towards the end of the year. And, you know, some of them you could probably scoop up if you're aggressive um, for a nice January effect play. But again, we'll get into that later as we get closer to the end of the year. Anyways, uh, we covered energy here. Um, let's just, I mean, quick uranium here, CCJ, URNM, no real update here from last week. Again, we're still watching this daily, or excuse me, weekly inside bar there on the URNM as well as CCJ. So until it gets above that, um, it's still in a little bit of a weak kind of technical pattern here on the weekly time frame. Um, no real uh, movement either in the ag names. You see Mosaic, um, DBC, Intrepid, NTR, really just kind of stuck in this holding pattern and working off that big overbought condition. This is all just big, bigger, uh, longer term consolidation, if you ask me. Uh, Nat Gas here. So Nat Gas had a nice dump on Friday. And if we get over to the daily there. So a nice dump there. It got back below the 20 and 50 moving average and back below that break, um, that breakout level there. This is still kind of all over the map. I do have some buy levels possibly worked out for this. I just want to see how it trades. Earlier in the week, um, traded this recently twice with Boyle, made some nice money. Um, I'll look to do that again, but we got to get into the levels here. I do think it wants to test six in the near term. Then we'll see how it behaves off of that. But I am uh, interested in possibly getting into Nat Gas uh, one more time here. But got to wait for the right setup. And, um, you know, I don't want to jump the gun here because Nat Gas can really turn against you very quickly if you're not careful. Anyways, dollar. Um, again, continuing to fade here with the catalyst of uh, Jay Powell on Wednesday. So we came down, kind of put in a little kind of choppy, sloppy, bearish consolidation here. It, was, it did look like the double bottom wanted to hold a little bit uh, longer there, but it did roll over. You know, Powell was a catalyst. Um, you guys know I'm looking for, I'll put my lines back on here. So looking for that 104 test here in the near term. And then I do have some other levels worked out that are a little bit lower, which I think will be pretty good buy levels here for the dollar. So we'll be watching that coming up here. Um, but for right now, dollar under a little bit of pressure. And that is helping gold. Remember, gold is basically sniffing out a lower yield right now. And that is the reason for the rally. So 1625 up to 1811. I do think in probably in the near term, maybe you get up to 1850, um, 1845, 1850. It is a little short term overbought, but it's it's had a nice bounce off the lows. Take a look at GDX. Um, big move off the lows there. And, you know, I was getting laughed at by a few people when I told, you know, when I was saying buy GDX down here, um, 22, 23, 24 bucks. I told people I was banging my fist on the table to buy Newmont down at sub 45, 40 bucks. And I said, it's going to go back to 50. And then we're basically got there on Friday, or I should say Thursday, but this chart looks really nice here. Um, the miners are holding up well. Silver, I've been telling you guys $23 for probably over a month now. And uh, we got above that on Friday. It's a little short-term extended, but this can be bought on dips here. I do like silver. I like the uh, pattern on SILJ. This wants to go to 12 bucks. Um, so that one, I would like to get a little bit more of a consolidation pattern or something. If, if they can give us that, um, that should get up to that 12 handle. So that's a play I'm going to be looking to put on possibly this week. But silver holding up well as well. And uh, platinum also nice, you know, nice pull back into the 20 moving average and a bid off of that a little bit of backing off on Friday. This will ultimately go to 1200. I'll be looking to play this one as well. Um, just needs to give me a little bit more of a pattern here, but platinum holding up nicely and copper also getting a nice bid this week. Remember we had that kind of ugly engulfing reversal a few weeks ago. So it did manage to pair some of the losses uh, this past week, although it has to get above 396 on a weekly closing basis um, to really kind of negate that, uh, that sell off there. All right, lastly, um, into Bitcoin. So we talked briefly about BlockFi. So that did happen. We had a bankruptcy earlier this week. And the sector is just under a lot of pressure. You do have a micro bullish pattern here. And I pointed this out on Friday. Um, so we came down here and we're still inside of this big red bar. So we do have a bearish inside bar on Bitcoin currently. But zooming in, you know, you do have a micro bull flag. So that does suggest a possible move back up to that 18,000 area, maybe the 50 moving average. And then we'll see how it behaves there. Bigger picture, though, I still think this goes down to, you know, probably about eleven or twelve thousand here uh, for the next move. But for right now, it's holding up and it's hanging in there. Um, so we'll just kind of get the benefit of the doubt for right now. Um, lastly, just to wrap up. So again, uh, FOMC not next week, but the week after. 
we also have CPI as well. Uh, so a lot of data coming out. If the market trades up, again, in a kind of a euphoric nature, if we're gapping up, um, you know, if, if the market's on a sugar high into that, I think it's a sell the news here. Um, if not, it could go either way. But I believe by quarter one, uh, we do see some pretty um, significant selling and a resumption in the bear market in any way uh, you look at it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on carnivortrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all next.